we often don't think about it, but a lot of caregiving becomes financial caregiving. Uh, managing the checkbook, maybe taking care of the taxes, maybe making investment decisions, uh, setting up a will or a trust. And it's useful to get help from somebody who knows what they're doing in that front, some sort of a financial professional, whether it be an advisor or an accountant or a lawyer, uh, not to try to do that all yourself. And also there's the coordination of all the different activities. That loved one may need uh, some care at home, so who's going to coordinate that home caregiver? or that loved one may need to go to see three different doctors during the course of the week. How do you keep that all coordinated? So there's co coordination, there's hands-on care, and there's also the financial caregiving. And sometimes that's all handled by the same person, you know, a loving spouse or an adult child. But sometimes it's, it's, it's shared among a family. So different people handle different assignments in order to get the job done and keep that loved one feeling respected and comfortable and hopefully on the path to recovery and better health. Every situation is different. You know, if you're looking after your mom and she lives next door, it's different than if your mom lives a thousand miles away. So every situation is different. It's also different depending on is the person recovering from a, a slip and a fall and they'll be okay in two months, or does the loved one have some kind of cognitive loss? And that might be years in passing, uh, and, and you'll have to be looking after them. But there's a few things that, um, a few challenges that people can be smart about. Uh, one of them is to have some kind of plan in place uh, for how you're going to handle the care of a loved one if it's needed. And that can usually require a disruption in a person's normal life plan. I mean, if you're busy working 60 hours a week and you've got to care for your mom, you're going to have to make some changes. Many employers are comfortable with that and they're supportive of that. And uh, even learning from your HR manager or your boss whether such pr provisions are a part of your work plan. Another thing <clears throat> that it's good to uh, be ready for is it's an emotional experience, caregiving. When my mom was in her last years of life, she had Alzheimer's, and so it made me sad to be with her. The being with her on the one hand was a great honor because she had always been there for my brother and I, and the chance to be there for her in her last years felt like a privilege almost. You know, it was an honor that I was, I was glad to fill, but it was sad because what you're seeing is the decline of somebody you love. So we're at a very interesting turning point right now in history. Throughout all of human history, most people didn't age, they died. Throughout 99% of human history, the life expectation worldwide was under 18. Even when we signed our Declaration of Independence, the average life expectancy was only 35 years. And so historically people lived a few decades, maybe a few folks lived to be 50 or 60 or 80, but not many. What we've seen is that because of extraordinary breakthroughs in the 20th century in medicine and nutrition and refrigeration and, and environmental controls and safety, uh, that most of us now are going to live very, very long lives. In fact, it could continue to rise. The average person today at the age of 50 lives to about 85. But the belief is that in the future, because of even more breakthroughs with AI and stem cells and all sorts of things, living to 100 may become normal. And so what's happened is that we've created an entirely new stage of life. For our great-grandparents, when they reached 60 or 65, it was pretty much time to kind of wind it up. Today, you know, Springsteen is still doing pretty great at 68. I think the average age of the Rolling Stones right now is mid-70s. Um, Jane Fonda's in her ninth decade of life and still getting a lot of attention. And uh, we've got more and more people in every community and every neighborhood at 70 and 80 and 90 writing their first book of poems, starting not-for-profit organizations, you know, winning races at the, at, at the uh, Senior Olympics and giving us all a different impression about what might be possible in this new era of extended longevity.